This video is sponsored by VR Wave. Stick around to see more. Thank you to VR Wave for sponsoring the video. If there's one video I've made that is ages poorly as milk setting out in the sun, it's this one. My free Quest 2 games video. Not because the video itself was bad, it's good. It made me a lot of money. That's a lie. They barely paid me. But everything else ages so terribly. To recap, Gun Raiders updated as I made the video making parts of my talk about it obsolete, Pavlov is no longer free, Web Guy updated making what I said about it obsolete, and Roblox had an official release. Yikes. On top of this, many people were complaining about the games not being native or PC VR only, and reasonably so. It was kind of misleading. So we're gonna make some ground rules for this. Number one, the games I talk about will be exclusively native, meaning absolutely anyone can get them. Number two, no demos. These need to be full as game. I see several people who make free videos that have nothing but demos in them, and it's such a cop out. And number three, these games need to be somewhat niche. Everyone knows about Gorilla Tag, I'm not talking about it. And sure, naturally, some of these games are gonna be decently popular, but I really do wanna talk about games not a lot of every people- What the f- I wanna talk about games not everybody knows. I'll try not to retread on games I've already talked about, so I'll keep that at a minimum and focus on stuff I haven't talked about before. Without further ado, like, subscribe, and comment what free games you'd like to see me cover next time. So, uh, with that said, Fishing, baby! Oh, yeah, fishing, Let's baby! Let's catch some fish, Salmon. baby! Cod, I want it all, oh, baby! Because I'm gonna fish, baby! I'm gonna fish, I want baby. it all, baby! I'm gonna kill myself! I'm gonna kill the fish! I'm gonna fish, baby! Maybe VR is pretty neat. For some reason, I always thought this game was paid, so when I was searching for games to play for this video, I was pleasantly surprised when I found that it was this completely free. So, how is it? It's pretty damn good, actually. It's very simple, but it's got some nice depth with its fishing mechanic, making it relatively accurate to actual fishing. I remember one time when I went on a little tiny fishing trip with my granddad. We were fishing and he told me, boy, nothing will ever beat this moment. I love you. That isn't true, but it'd be sweet if it was. I've never fished. This game is pretty hard to make it sound interesting when talking about the base game. Uh, hey, you know fishing? Uh, yeah, it's like that. In my opinion, where this game really shines is in its multiplayer. Yeah, this game has multiplayer and it's kind of perfect, actually. You and up to three other friends can sit side by side on lawn chairs and just fish. I really wish something like this existed during the virus era in 2020 that we all know, but for some reason I can't say because I'll get demonetized for some reason, thanks YouTube. With the big trend of having real life imitations in video game form, this would have fit in perfectly. I didn't even check to see if it even released then or later, so don't fact check me. But regardless, I didn't hear about it, and I still don't, so I don't think much changed. It really is just a whole other vibe being able to just sit down, talk to the boys, drink a beer which isn't beer and is probably coke because I'm- <laughs> and fish. This game is great, and the other fishing mechanics I feel are insanely good for a free game. I know there's other paid fishing games, but let's be honest, I would rather pay $20 for a game that maybe has better fishing mechanics and graphics, or a fun regardless get together fishing time with the boys in lawn chairs. I don't know, cause I don't have $20, uh, but I'd still probably play bait. So it's time to get ranking. Each game presented in this video will be ranked on a scale based from 1 to 10 using arbitrary guidelines and quotas I've made up to rate them. So what does bait VR get? I'd say it gets a nice 8 out of 10. If you're looking for a fishing game, I mean this is exactly what you want. I'd say the only real drawback is that a fishing game in general is already limited in terms of content, so it can get a bit boring fast. Uh, but aside from that, this is a damn solid game that you should try out. Listen, you know, I, I dislike sexual assault as much as the next guy. You know, that's some bad stuff. Rape? Boo! Don't like it. But... The next game up we have is... Uh, shit, hold on, it's, it's really fucking blurry. Oh, there we go. Luckily, all that blur is fixed thanks to the VR Wave prescription lenses, which are the sponsor of today's video. If you have glasses, you know how much of a pain playing VR is sometimes. Even with the glasses spacer, it's pretty hit and miss and often leads to discomfort and all around worst game experience. Fortunately for you, VR Wave has you covered with these sleek prescription lenses that fit your specific prescription. Say goodbye to long VR sessions that end in your glasses being 3 inches into your skin, say goodbye to an unusually grotesque amount of fogging up from your glasses, and say goodbye to some other third thing. Because VR Wave fixes all problems with wearing glasses in VR. But it did an absolutely terrible job with the Quest 3 glasses spacer, the build quality of it is so terrible mine broke within a week, leaving my glasses to awkwardly push up against my face, which if you wear glasses, you know that's just this is not good. The lenses are insanely easy to set up. You just pop two bases in and the lenses themselves are just magnets that you just put on and take off whenever you want. It's amazing and has immensely increased my enjoyment of VR. My name is Charlie Moist Critical. I love the VR Wave subscription lenses. You're so good at them now with the link in the description. They're so cool. Thank you to VR Wave for sponsoring this video. And since I can now see the next game, let's talk about it.
Next up is a game called Half and Half. What is Half and Half, you say? So, okay, imagine you were playing a game, and then you kept playing it, and it was a game. That's Half and Half. Half and Half is easy to explain when giving a little Wikipedia plot synopsis. Uh, everything else sounds like the rambling of a schizophrenic with cancer. Here, watch. Half and Half is a fun multiplayer virtual reality game mini collection. It boasts games like hide and seek, competitive hang gliding, competitive hang gliding, but in third person, hole in the wall. I promise this game is good. All right, so when you start playing, it's a really neat mini game collection with a really good art style. But as you play more, uh, you, you kind of wonder what the theme of any of them are. About half of them are these party games with friends like hide and seek and the hang gliding one. And then the other half is just uh, stuff like swimming. So I guess you could say it's it. Oh my fucking god, it's half and half. All right, let me be real for a second. These mini games are actually pretty decent. Most of them are pretty bare bones, sure, but looking at it as this extreme AAA masterpiece is a horrible mindset to go in with. It's nothing more than a short few hours of fun, and it's not trying to be something it isn't. Hide and seek is genuinely terrifying. You're either a big guy or tiny small, and as the big guy, you hunt down tiny smalls before they collect seven chaos emeralds, and it's terrifying because as tiny small, you're constantly fearing this massive fall guy fuck to be looming in on your window searching for you. I promise it's scary, okay? Hang gliding is really fun too, and Hole in the Wall is something that was made for VR. It's really good. The only one thing I don't really get though is swimming, uh, because what? Not like it's great or anything. The swimming isn't very accurate and the graphics are there. I don't know, it feels kind of out of place and kind of pointless. It's also a shame that this game is pretty much dead. Uh, the most players I saw online at a time was 16, which, man, that's depressing. This game is pretty fun though, and just going into it as a fun little multiplayer experience will leave you pretty satisfied. I'd rate this one about a six or a seven. It's fun for me just to grab a boob, plus my penis got an attitude. I'm gonna do a lightning round on this one because it's technically not out, but uh, Contractor Showdown is really fucking good. Try to get a key of it while you can because, oh my god, it's just so beautiful. It's everything I wanted out of a VR battle royale. Hey, that was a lie. I'm such a lazy piece of shit that it's been so long making this video that there is no longer an NDA, and I can actually just talk about it. Just like how my Twitter link in my description is outdated because I got suspended, so, you know, go follow it. As you all know, Battle Royale shooters have given me trust issues, specifically one, being Population 1. A 25-player Battle Royale with a map worse than the Holocaust. I already made an entire video on it that you can check out, so I'll save you the details. Uh, but when a Battle Royale got announced that was a part of none other than the Contractor's IP, I was decently excited, to say the least. Oh. Oh! 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 Being built off the foundation of contractors was great because right off the bat, you already have really good guns. We already know the guns are great, so let's talk about what matters. The map. And holy shit, they actually did it. Well, obviously, yes, it's flawed, some things look low budget, and the grass floats, but oh my god, it's actually good. There's biome diversity, there's detail, there are memorable POIs, which, wow! The POIs are really good! Since I haven't played much of the game, I don't actually remember the names of them, but Wow, I remember them. They actually decided to make POIs with general theme. You've got an industrial city, ruins, and so much more. In Population 1, every single place looked like that fucking Willy Wonka AI-generated experience from Glasgow. In Contractor Showdown, every place has a theme and a reason to exist. They also decided to give places decent size, like holy shit, this is bigger than Tilted Towers. The gameplay loop is fun, the movement is just oh, chef's kiss, and to be honest, I think we should bomb the Population 1 headquarters. 9 out of 10. Next up is probably the most well-known on this list, or one of, Hyperdash. Hyperdash is a typical VR shooter on the surface, but it's ready to drop bombs, but it keeps on forgetting where it wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud, it opens the crowd, so loud, it opens the Sorry. Looks like a typical VR shooter, but its gimmick is the, uh, <clears throat> the Hyperdash, uh, I guess this gimmick is not enough to save a mid shooter. This gunplay better be good. So, yeah, the dash is, uh, neat, I suppose. The flick of the analog stick, you can dash nearly instantly wherever you want, which is admittedly cooler than it actually sounds. You see, you're not limited to dashing in front of or behind you. You can basically make the dash an instant jump and dash up to higher platform. This alone adds a very fast paced tone to the game, with every fight and battle moving at breakneck speeds and almost ending before they even begin. Which that might sound a little annoying, but and in some cases it is, don't get me wrong, but this is a much appreciated change. Pace. I think the only thing that would make the fast pace nearly perfect is lowering the time it takes to respawn. So you can just
just get right back in there. Aside from that, I'm a fan. The guns aren't anything super special or unique, sure, but I don't think uniqueness or gimmicks really matter if there's just fun to start with. Every gun is decent fun, from the shotguns to the pistols, there's this underlying layer of satisfaction that these guns give that not a lot of other VR guns can replicate. Do I know why? <laughs> no, not at all. That's why I'm gonna urge you to play it yourself. Anyways, there's multiple modes in here such as payload where one team tries to push the payload forward while the other tries to prevent it from moving forward. It's pretty simple and it's fun. Half of the time. You get mad counterpicked if you end up being on the defensive team, the team that's trying to stop the payload from moving. Being on the offensive side is really easy as a gentle breeze is enough to keep the payload moving, while pushing it backwards is, uh, impossible. So there's no going backward, only forward. Uh, can you see why this doesn't work? However, that doesn't matter because, guess what, you can just not play it and play the only thing that actually matters, the death matches. And when you do, man, this is just straight up fun. It's something revolutionary in terms of VR shooters, sure. And in fact, it really doesn't do nothing special at all. But who cares? If it's fun, it's fun. So who gives a shit? I like this. This is fun. Hyper Dash, while not anything never seen before, seen, seen, what? I'm having a seizure of a fall, not anything never seen before, is fun. And at the end of the day, if it's fun, I don't care. 7.5 out of 10. On to the next one, we have a game that I thought looked really promising off of the little thumbnail of Shootout. Shootout is a 3v3 shooter. Oh! Alright, alright, what's new, I know. But it has a pretty cool gimmick of- oh! Yes, trust me, I know, I'm tired of VR shooters as much as the next guy. Hopefully. But the gimmick of this game is really neat. In concept. So the whole gimmick here is that instead of having a gun that you hold, it's a gun that floats around your arm. You can customize it. You have your initial gun, in this case we'll say is a little assault rifle, cool. But you can drag these attachments and combine it with other guns to create this mix of multiple weapons and attachments. Essentially, turning your assault rifle into a three-in-one. Sounds cool, right? Yeah, sort of. But it mainly only works on paper. All these are just glorified attachments in a way, and combining guns isn't really special because, well, it's pretty necessary. You could use a base AR, but there's literally no point in that. It's not like there's much combination when it comes to guns. With an AR, there's probably only gonna be one or two combinations you use, and you'll probably end up sticking with one anyways. And the thing is, there's a lot of combinations. But most of the time, these variations are just very minor, don't serve that much of a purpose. Now your shots curve slightly, now they have a different color. Whoa! There's some cool ones, no doubt, I don't want to make it seem like everything here is pointless. It's just underwhelming considering how genuinely cool of a concept it is. I just find it annoying, because this is a really cool concept. Take these really futuristic guns and combine them with other futuristic guns to create big gun. But unfortunately, it's just not super interesting. The cool thing though is that you can have combinations on each hand, so you can have a decked out AR on one hand and a decked out grenade launcher on another. It's a cool visual, no doubt, but it's not all that enjoyable. With all the VR shooters out there, I think it's really hard to justify adding yet another to constantly play, which isn't necessarily the game's fault, but it's starting to get tiring, which in turn makes this a bit more boring. Can someone tell me what these categories are? Schmungus? I want a what? VPN. A VPN into what? Another dimension? I, I married a schmungus. What the hell is a schmungus? <laughs> what is the schmungus among us? What the f- <laughs> Schmungus is revenge? What? They stole my schmungus. What? Next up, we have a VR shooter update. All right, look, look, look. I get it. I know. You're sick of VR shooters. I am too. But it's better for the both of us if we just stop acknowledging that and just accept that there's a lot of them that need to be talked about. Like this one, Gun Raiders. Gun Raiders is probably one of, if not my most played on quest. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is entirely up to you, but I think there's a good reason for it. You see, Gun Raiders is a movement shooter, or at least about as close to a movement shooter you can get in VR. You have a jetpack, which can be used to fly, and a dash that may just be on the suicide note of any user with controller drift. Both of these things use fuel, which replenishes after not using either of them for a while. And the last thing at your movement disposal is the climb. On the surface... No. On the surface, it's just your ordinary hand, wall, grip, climb. But in reality, this thing is so much more due to the power of the fling. Basically, you use your hand like an angry virus slingshot. I'm now realizing Angry Birds, uh, uh, autocorrect to Angry Virus. You use your hand like an Angry Birds slingshot and then let go and you'll be sent flying. Doing this effectively can essentially be faster than both jetpack and dashes combined. And I can't lie, it's one of the most fun ways to get around. Anyways, before I talk more about the special mechanics, let's talk about the actual shooter part of it. We got a wide array of weapons such as pistols, a sniper, SMG, AR, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the picture, but they knew that that would be boring. So then they threw in the funky shit and oh, 
Yes! First off, you got a katana, which is a simply Super Smash Bros. Cloud Meter, so when you hit someone, it charges up a meter, which can either be used to heal you or buff your attack. You got a railgun, which charges up, and if you're able to hit a clean shot, the other enemy turns into Grandma's Ashes. You got the crossbow, which is extremely useful in switching it to the poison arrows, which give your enemies so much anxiety from hearing attack hits over and over that they instantly kill themselves in real life out of fear. That's not mentioning the secondary weapons either. You've got a normal pistol, whatever, but you've also got a cross- Oh fuck, the crossbow is the second warrior weapon. My fault, you also have the grappling hook, uh, which I'll be honest, is actual garbage, but it looks cool, so I'm gonna use it anyways. On top of that, there's a shuriken scar, so this, this shit is ass too, cut the camera. So what even is a gun raiders? Well, it's a fun shooter with a bunch of modes, like team deathmatch, capture the point, and more, right? WRONG! It's actually a government psyop experiment that places you in a small battle royale island- <laughs> Small battle royale island disguised as a lobby to make sure you never get into an actual game because that kid just called you a slur and now you gotta fight him for the next 20 minutes until either you or him leave. I don't think I've even tried the game modes. Besides, the best part of this game is genuinely just the fucking hub that essentially acts as better deathmatches anyways. Imagine Fortnite going into chapter 6, but you could still play on the chapter 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 maps at any time. That's this. And just like Fortnite, they haven't topped the first map. <laughs> Anyways, I go on and on about this game. Uh, you can clearly see which of these games I'm really passionate about and which I don't care about, but we need to give other games a chance to shine, so let's see the next game. And hopefully, dear God, it isn't a shooter. Oh my fucking God, it's another VR shooter. All right, let me look at more. Oh, would you look at that? More VR shooters. This huge fucking medium, a medium where you aren't bound by controllers and, and buttons. But no, let's just make shooters. Let's just only make shooters. Why can't we have more games that truly push the boundaries of VR? Sushi Bin is such an incredibly beautiful VR game that even though I know it's not free, I'm still talking about it, sadly hasn't gotten the coverage it should have. It's a beautiful game, but nope, fucking another competitive VR shooter is getting a port, so let's talk about that instead. The state of VR shooters is so incredibly boring and uninteresting, I just wish I could talk about it. So, I will. See ya.